A very warm welcome, one and all. This is the first episode of the SPL Express, a show that's meant to be short, sharp and sweet as we give you the lowdown of what's happened in the Singapore Premier League and look forward to the weekend ahead. And here with me, we have former Ballastier, Home United and SAF midfielder Rish Roshan Rai. Roshan, in the spirit of the show, if you had to describe the opening weekend in one word, what word would that be? Sweet, just like you, Abi. End that introduction. <laughs> that was excellent, man. Really, really good one. Uh, look, no, I think the real word would be shocked or on a perhaps slightly more positive, no, perhaps surprised in a sense. Um, look, I think the fact that uh, Tanjong Paga and Ballester Kalsa, sides that were in the bottom four last season, were able to beat sides in the top four, uh, was pretty exciting. It was pretty, really, really unexpected. Uh, let's look at the, uh, the results from last weekend, actually. Mm. If we have a look, uh, the opening day was Albrecht Negata suffering a huge upset, as you mentioned, Roshan, to Tanjong Paga losing 2-0. Ballester Kalsa staging an impressive comeback against Tampanese Rovers to hold them to a two-all draw. And Lion City Sailors, I guess, flexing their depth and squad mm. with a 3-1 win over Haugang United. Mm. Roshan, what were the three takeaways from those three matches? Well, let's start with uh, Lion City Sailors against, against uh, Haugang United. And I think the, for the Lion City Sailors, the first thing that really sort of caught my eye here was the depth. You know, the scary sort of strength and depth that the Lion City Sailors have. And that's going to be a big issue for uh, a lot of the teams in the SPL to deal with this season. The fact that when you think about it, when you think about the squad that they started with, the 11 that they started with, and the players that they were able to bring on, it's incredible, isn't it? Lopez could come in and change the game. Hafiz Noh could come in. Uh, I think he came in for Hamish Shaheen in the first half, and he picked up an assist for himself as well, Hafiz Noh. Lopez coming in and opening the game up for the Lion City Sailors. And then how about Lestien? I know lots of people out there were really excited about Maxime Lestien coming into this Lion City Sailor squad and for him to make the impact that he did creating that uh, that opportunity for Lopez to score the goal as well brilliant brilliant and when you look what a bench Kim Do Hoon has um, at the defending champions now the question is how can have a pretty decent squad themselves mm. I mean there are a couple of national players as well mm -hmm. in the team good uh, foreign signings as well yeah. now if you're a player in an opposing team and you look at the opposite your opposite <laughs> dugout you see a squad like that how, how do other players how will they approach playing the Sailors yeah, you know, the, the thing is, what's, what's great about this is when you speak to some of the players from, from Haogang, I spoke to uh, Fabian recently as well, and Drakian, they look at it as, as a big challenge. They look at it as, you know, if you're a professional player, you look at these matches as opportunities to show what you can do. And you're looking forward to playing against these sides. And imagine if you can actually come away with the win or come away with the point. It's, it's, it's going to be something massive, something huge. And I think for me, coming into this season, Haogang, I would like to see them as, as title challenges because of the squad that they have, because of the foreign signings that they have. I think uh, Pedro had a good start to his Haogang career. Uh, with that goal, get, got them off to a great start. Perhaps wasn't their best performance, I think, Haogang, uh, as a whole in that game. Uh, but look, it's, it's early days yet, they've got an opportunity to bounce back. But I think players are always motivated. You know, yeah, they know it's going to be up against you know, a star-studded side. It's going to be tough, it's going to be difficult. But you, know, you see that challenge and you want to try and overcome that. Let's talk about another of your former clubs, Ballastia, perhaps <laughs> in a Topayo Classic, holding Tampines to a 2 all draw. What was your takeaway from that game? Wow, um, you know, you always say this and people say it's cliche. It's game of two halves, right? Because Tampanese looked good uh, in the first half, coming away with the 2-0 lead. And then half-time, Ballester changed a couple of things up. Uh, on the defensive front, in the first half, they looked a little bit shaky, quite open, Ballester. Uh, but in the second half, you know, they, they, they got off to a great start, pressing high up, forcing an error from uh, Ryan Sanizal. Uh, and then Taniguchi with that assist for Hoshino. Lovely finish. And I quite like Hoshino playing in this striker's position. Remember, he, at Ballester over the last couple of years or so, has had to almost play as a second striker. Not quite his best position, but we start to see him now in that number nine role for, for Ballester. And I think he'll make a big impact for, for them uh, in those forward positions. And then, of course, when you think of that second goal that they scored to Enza Brunchevich, uh, it was like for all the preseason talk of Ballester and how they're going to come up with a new style of play, they're going to be playing passing out from the back, aggressive. I mean, it was almost a throwback to the Ballester of all, wasn't it? I mean, I mean, I'll be, they like kick the, uh, the, put the set piece into the box and mad scramble in the area, forced a couple of errors, Tampanese couldn't clear the lines and then Brunchevich just put it in the back of the net and, and that's how the game ended. But really good comeback from the Tigers. And there was a bit of controversy, online chatter, let's say, with regards to the build-up and the second goal. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts on that? The Tampanese, uh, Tampanese second goal, you mean, yep. where that was caught by Taufik? Yeah, yep. so there was a bit of, of controversy online. Um, but that's the nature of social media these days, in the sense that people want to talk first before fully understanding the situation. So I know what actually uh, happened was that the referee, Taki, who's one of the best in Asia, by the way, never mind Singapore, um, signaled initially for a throw into Ballester. 
Uh, but he was in communication with his assistant referee who actually flagged and told him that it should have been a throw in to, to Tampanese. So Tampanese picked up the ball, got off to a restart. So actually it was the correct decision. Uh, and I can understand the Bellister players perhaps getting a little bit upset with it, but the, the, the matter remains that, the fact remains that uh, it was the right call by Taki and his team of officials. And that's what they're all there for. So the assistant referee is there to help the referee as well. And at the end of the day, it was the right decision uh, to allow that goal. So it was the right call. Let's talk about the opening game of the season. Albrecht's being stunned by Tanjong Paga. The, probably the result of the weekend, actually. Yeah. But even more iconic was the quote uh, given by the assistant coach. Let's have a listen first. It's a team game. Um, it's a perfect performance by um, everyone in the team. I think the defence did very well. And to score uh, two goals against Albrex, I think that's what that, that's all matters to us today. This is the result of the hard work of the coaches, the bedroom staff, and also the players today for implementing the, the game management that we have already implemented um, during pre-season. And uh, I think the composure, uh, I think we have to mention that at the back today we play with uh, Fatula, who's uh, not uh, an out defender. I think the composure that he showed, I think it's it's kind of uh, um, make the whole team uh, more relaxed. And I think uh, we could have played until Sunday and I don't think Abirax will score a goal against us. Well, if you needed a better quote, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find something better than that. Roshan, your thoughts on what he's uh, point pointed out by Albrecht there? Uh, excellent. First of all, I think this is the kind of the character that we need in the league. You know, um, coaches or players not afraid to just have a little bit of a dig at times. And it just creates a lot more excitement, I think, around the competition. So it's fantastic to, to hear that uh, from the Tanjung Paga camp. And, and you're quite right. You know, he, it was a really deserved result you know, from, from Tanjung Paga because the way they defended was incredible. I mean, they, they took their early opportunities, two early goals. They were clinical, uh, Ryo Nishiguchi, um, with the quality that he showed in those forward positions. Uh, and then they said, you know, we've got this two-goal lead. Let's just sit back and, and, and hold firm and keep our defence tight. And that's exactly what they did. 5-3-2 sort of formation. Um, and compact between the lines, worked incredibly hard at midfield um, of Blake Rashuto and then Sugic in there as well, Rujaidi playing in, that, uh, in the centre of the park. Fatula, this young man, is, is someone who I always talk about in my commentary whenever I'm doing a game on Tanjung Paga. He's such an exciting talent, you know, he played in central midfield last season for large parts of last season and in this game against uh, Elbrex, he was playing right in the heart, in the centre of that defence alongside uh, Emmerich uh, in those positions and, and Faritz as well. So, you know, I mean, what they had, they protected and they protected well. And let's remember that this was the Tanjung Paga side that came into this game um, and there were question marks about uh, the build-up. You know, that players missing uh, through injury, that players who were, I think, recovering from, from a COVID situation at the club. So uh, training-wise was disrupted. The build-up into the game was disrupted, but they still fought incredibly well, incredibly hard, and they came away with a huge three points. And lots of people out there, including myself, I think were expecting Tanjung Paga perhaps this season to struggle a little bit. But what a start for them. Well, incredible start. Let's see what they're up to this weekend as well. If we have a look at the fixtures for the upcoming weekend. So Tanjung Paga up against Haogang United. That's on Sunday at 5.30pm at the Jurongi Stadium. But Geelang International will be opening up the weekend as they play their first fixture. They're up against the mighty Lion City Sailors. And on Saturday, it's Albrecht's Negata up against Ballastia Kalsa at home. Roshan, quick predictions on these three. Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, listen, I'm terrible at predictions and, uh, and that's why I'm sat right here next to you uh, doing this show. Uh, <laughs> Geelang International <laughs> against Lion City Sailors. I mean, I, I think we're quite excited about Geelang International starting out this season uh, and with the squad that they have. But I'm going to go with Lion City Sailors uh, to win that one. 2-0 to Lion City Sailors. Uh, let's go with uh, Tanjung Paga United against Haogang United. I expect Haogang United to bounce back from that one. 2-1 to, uh, to the Cheetahs. Uh, and then Elbrex Negata against Bellas de Calza. I think Elbrex, the White Swans, will take that by two goals to nil. So you mentioned Elbrex to win 2-0 mm. against Bellas de Calza. We're going to hold you accountable <laughs> to that. But firstly, that is our feature game for the week. Uh, is, there, is there a lot of pressure on right now on Elbrex though? I think so. I think there is pressure on, on Elbrex to, to get a result from here. And by result, I think they need to win, basically. Um, listen, I said about the predictions, I, I don't know if I'm going to get any of them, right? But if I do, I'm going to be claiming and calling myself the, the Oracle <laughs> from now on, right? But look, Elbrex, with, uh, with the quality that they have and with the expectations that people have put on them, in terms of coming into this season, being a challenger, one of the challenges to the Lion City Sailors, it is just it people, hasn't quite is, worked is out for them. Is it people putting putting pressure on them, on them putting on them, putting pressure on themselves based well, on how they perform? I, I think both. I think both of uh, both sides of it. You know, I think from the outside looking in, we always see them as one of the better clubs in Singapore uh, with the way that they're run, with the players.
players that they're able to bring in. And also, I think themselves, they put themselves under the pressure to constantly win and to win trophies. And I think they would have been hurt by the fact that they missed out on the title last season. We saw them react in the transfer window in terms of bringing Taranari Lee in, uh, a big name signing for them. So, you know, I think uh, it's, it's, it's both aspects of it. And they'll expect to have done a lot better than they have at the start of this campaign. I mean, you think about the Community Shield. Um, when you think about the first game against Tanjung Paga, for me, one of the issues with Elbrex is the fact that they don't kill off their opportunities. They create chances. They do create chances just based on the way that they play. They're able to create opportunities, but they don't finish off. You know, we look at these two, these two games, the numbers uh, that we're putting up there from the Community Shield and the opening match of, of the SPL season. 33 shots. 33 shots. That's a good number of chances created. Just the eight on target. Um, and just the one goal in two matches so far. And that was through a uh, Taranari Lee penalty as well, which was, to me, a little bit controversial. You know, I, I, again, when you look at these numbers, and, and I'm famous for saying this, you have to think about high-quality opportunities. And when you look at their games, when you watch their games, they have created high-quality opportunities in the, in the two matches so far. They just haven't been able to kill teams off. And that was a bit of an issue with them last season, and it seems to have followed them into this season, even though it's a completely different squad almost. So that's a big worry for me with regard to Alvarex. Um, so the pressure is on. They can't fall too far behind the Lion City Sailors in terms of the, the, the title race there. So they'll be needing, desperately needing the three points, and they need to work on their finishing in this game. So that brings us to the end of the first episode of the SPL Express. Roshan, hope you had a good time. Oh, I had a great time. Uh, it was great that we got a, a chance to, to cover what's gone on in the SPL so far and looking ahead to, to what's coming up in the SPL this weekend. And as you mentioned, lots of exciting action coming up this weekend. Do like, share, subscribe, do all those wonderful things on our social media platforms. Till next time, this is Rich Roshan Rai and Abhishek Ravikrishnan signing off. Take care.